If you haven't done so, please pause the video and try to solve the question on your own before listening on. What we want to do first is draw a picture of this closed rectangular jewelry box. And so here is the box and we've colored the sides in blue and then the top and bottom of the box will be colored in orange. The question notes that the base of the rectangular box actually has a square shape. So that means that the length as well as the width of the box are going to have the same dimension, which we can call x. We can call the height y. And then what we want to do is figure out an expression for the area of the four sides of the box. We can see that the front side would have an area of x multiplied by y. And then since all the sides are identical, we can safely say that the area of the sides would be 4xy. The top and bottom have dimensions of x times x, which of course is x squared. And so we can represent the area of the top and bottom as 2x squared. Notice we're using a 2 because that would account for the area of the top as well as the area of the bottom. The question doesn't really want us to minimize or maximize the area per se. It wants us to minimize the cost. So we have to change the area expressions into cost. And to do that, we can actually take the area of the sides of the box and multiply it by its cost, which is $30 per meter squared. And by doing that, that's going to change the area of the sides of the box into the cost of the sides of the box. Similarly, for the top and bottom of the box, what we can do is multiply the area of the top and the bottom of the box by its cost per meter squared. And that again would change the area of the top and bottom into the cost of the top and bottom. Now, we want to minimize the entire cost of the box, so what we want to have is a function for the total cost. Now the total cost of course would just be these two costs added together. So there we have the total cost function. We can simplify it a little bit by multiplying the 30 by the 4 as well as the 20 by the 2. And this is good but the only problem with it is that it has two variables both x and y. And what we want to do is try to come up with an expression for y that we can substitute in. To do that, we turn to the volume of the box. Now, we know that the volume of any box is its length times its width times its height. We were told that the volume is 4,000 centimeters cubed. And then we have the length and width marked as x, so we would have x times x. And then the height of the box, again, was marked as y. Notice we can simplify the right side by calling it x squared y. We could then divide both sides of this equation by x squared in order to isolate y and then take that expression for y and substitute it into our cost function. We could then simplify our cost function by multiplying 120 by 4000 and then we can also cancel a factor of x since we have x to the first power and x to the second power. That'll cancel to just make x to the first power in the denominator. So we now have our cost function in terms of just one variable, and then in order to minimize the cost, we're going to calculate the derivative of this function. Perhaps before taking the derivative, it's going to be a good idea to take x and move it to the numerator. And when we do that, the x to the first power will become x to the negative first power. Now we can take the derivative. We'll call it c prime of x. And to do that, we're going to use power rules. We'll pull the negative 1 in front to make negative 480 thousand x. We'll then subtract 1 from the exponent to make x to the negative 2. We'll pull this power down and multiply to make 80 and then subtract 1 to make x to the first. After calculating the derivative we can go ahead and set it equal to 0 and try to solve for x. And to solve for x why don't we go ahead and add this term over to the right hand side of the equation. We can next multiply both sides of the equation by x to the positive 2. Now x to the negative 2 times x to the positive 2 will become x to the 0, which is just 1, so it essentially cancels. On the right side, we'll have 80x cubed. We can then divide both sides of the equation by 80, which will give us x cubed equals 6,000, and then we'll take the cube root of both sides of the equation. Now, 6,000 is not a perfect cube, and its value turns out to be 18.17. Now, to confirm that this actually minimizes the cost, we're going to proceed using a first derivative test. And to perform that test, what we do 
is we plot our 18.17 on a number line. We choose a value that's a little bit smaller than it and then a little bit larger. For example, we can choose 17. And what we're going to do is plug 17 into the first derivative. You might want to use a calculator for this part. And when we plug 17 into the first derivative, we get roughly negative 300. Now the precise value doesn't matter. All that matters is that the derivative turns out to be negative. When we have a negative derivative, that means that the cost function is decreasing up until 18.17. We can then plug in a number that's a little bit larger than 18.17, perhaps 19, and we get roughly 190. Again, the exact value doesn't matter. All that matters is that it, the first derivative is positive. When the first derivative is positive, the cost function will be increasing. And so we can see that the cost function decreases all the way up to 18.17 and then begins increasing beyond 18.17. That indeed confirms that we have a minimum cost when x is equal to 18.17. And then the unit would be centimeters because we used a unit of centimeters cubed when setting up the equation. So this is the correct answer for x. And then to find y, we simply recall that y was equal to 4,000 divided by x squared. So we'll plug in the value of x that we just found. And we get roughly 12.1 centimeters. So that's the correct value of y. Therefore, we can say that the dimensions of the box are 18.17 centimeters by 18.17 centimeters by 12.1 centimeters. That indeed is the correct answer to the question. Thanks for watching the video. If you liked it, click the thumbs up icon and subscribe to the channel so you can stay tuned for additional videos. You can send in your own question to the email address on the screen and I'll do my best to post the answer to it on YouTube.